Okay, so Jeremy, are you just going to show us? What are you showing us here? I am get showing it. the games that I'm going to talk about that I saw at Gamma. Okay. Uh, Amazing. Okay. So some of these I just saw. Uh, several of them I played, uh, including this one, obviously. I'm going to uh, check on dinner real quick. Okay. Um, so who made this one? What do you think about it? Uh, get Bits uh, is a, a, a re... Re-release of uh, a game that apparently an older, I think Japanese game originally, uh, Greater Than Games is publishing this. Uh, so we know it's good. Yes. Uh, so this was a neat little thing. Uh, it's a very, very light game. Uh, is it for kids? It is. It is targeted at kids. I feel like, but okay. Uh, it's actually it's fun, uh, and this would actually be a lot of fun to play with the new things. Oh, okay. Um, so like. Pre-teens, not baby kids. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, you can play this with pretty young. So the way this works is, uh, everybody picks a color. You get a hand of cards in that color. Um, so if you're the pink scuba diver, you get a hand of, of cards number one through nine, I believe, in pink. Okay. Um, and then on every turn, everybody bids a playing of cards face down, basically. Um, uh, and whoever has the highest card gets to go first. What go first means is you get to move to the front of the line. Okay. Um, and then the next highest card gets to move to the front of the line. Um, and then the lowest card, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, the lowest card goes first, then the, then the next highest, then the highest gets to move last. Because once everyone has moved, whoever is in the back gets bit by the shark. Oh! <laughs> And what you, what you may not be able to tell by looking at the picture here is all of those limbs on those swimmers are detachable. So when they get bit, you literally pop off a leg or an arm. Um, I want to pick her up, but I'm scared. You pick her up? Oh. Got a sack of flour. Oh, she wants some oh. belly rubs. Oh, you belly rub? Okay, come here. Oh, my goodness. This is a big old chunk of monka now. She is huge. Yeah. Come here, baby. Let's get on stream so you can see your freak. Okay, so, and then, like, you lose when all of your parts come off? Yes. Uh, when she wants, there's nothing but a torso here. left. Look over here. Uh, you have lost. Um... But that's it. That's the entire game. And uh, then, like, last man standing wins? Ba uh, basically. Um, <laughs> I love that. Okay. And the, the strategy, such that it is, comes into, okay, when do I play the high card? Because you've only got one nine. Once you've played uh, it. So you only have one guaranteed. Yep. yep. And the strategy is, like, you can't, if you play it at the same time as someone else. I forget what the tiebreaker rule is, but they. But they, you've shot your shot. You have shot your shot, so. Um, yeah, it's a real simple, real light game, uh, with, like with like neat little tail. components. Yeah, that looks fun. Yeah. Um, I've, I've played a couple rounds very briefly at their booth. It was neat. Um, <laughs> this was my game of the show. This is... This was your game of the show? Yes. This is a literati. Uh, okay, I'm actually, I'm gonna go put her down and let them out. Okay. Um. Barbara, I really wanted for you to hang out with us, but... I feel like you have to pee. <laughs> Come on, baby. This is by Gap Closer Games. Uh, okay. It is available now. Come on, Barb. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if you can find this at your game store. They were there trying to get game stores to pick it up. <laughs> uh, but you can get it from their website, if nothing else. Um, so the way that uh, the designer described this to me was it's like uh, Wordle meets Pandemic, which is a hell of a pitch. <laughs> I do really like Wordle. Um, so you are playing against the illiterati, the bad guys here, who are trying to destroy all language. Uh, you are trying to save books. Um, so you, the, by saving books, uh, they're, they're, they're cards that you give that, that have certain goals. So okay. they'll tell you, uh, yeah, the, these types of words or these types of letters or whatever. 
Uh, you you get dealt you get dealt letters like you're playing Scrabble. Um, it's cooperative as a group. Um, and then as a group, you are trying to rearrange those letters to spell words. Um, once everyone attempts to spell words, then the illiterati get to go, and they will do things like. Uh, add random letters, destroy letters, just do stuff to mess up. They sound like real jerks. Yes. Yeah, um, I feel like this game is right in your wheelhouse. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. I of fun. also feel like this game would be right in the wheelhouse of our non-board game friends. Yes, it, it's it's light enough. I like think I feel like Heather and Melissa would love this. Possibly, yeah. I, it, it's it's light enough and easy to, easy to pick up. But there's enough going on there that I think it's a really good like introductory game. Okay. For sure. Um I also play the connected clues. I want this game. I want this game so much. <laughs> uh we can get this game. Uh this is so uh this is made by Connected Clues. They're like their their own company there. Um, oh, okay. Uh, it is available. You can get it. Uh, they actually have a new version coming out uh, that works a little differently. But first, I should explain how connected clues work. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, they get you get two clues. Uh, if you're the clue giver, you draw a card. You see something like this. You have to give a clue for the word for the word or phrase on the top, and a clue for the word or phrase on the bottom. Yeah. Um, so the clue for the top could be something like. Uh, this is something that settlers used to travel in the 1800s or whatever, yeah. right? Um, and then the bottom will be some of the hackers eat. Okay, so I have I have one. Let's see if you can guess it. Okay. Okay, uh, so this is a, a person that puts warnings on the side of cigarettes. Okay. And it is also a delicious... Asian dish. Surgeon General says? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works, right? So, in this case, the person would, would hopefully figure out you meant Oregon Trail and Trail Mix, and then mash those together into Oregon Trail Mix. Uh, the, the one that the guy used with me as an example was uh, a restaurant, uh, a fast food restaurant with the Colonel, and uh, childhood disease that you only get once. Kentucky Fried Chicken Pots. Yep. I was like, chicken measles. <laughs> yes, chicken measles. <laughs> uh, so, uh, look, lots of party games are crap. <laughs> this one has actually seems to have a decent hook. That's, that's yeah, I feel like this also would be fun like in the car Yeah. to pass time. Um, the new one that they were showing off there uh, was... Um, uh, th instead of this, it's things that rhyme. Yeah, that stresses me out. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't like it as much. Uh, it, it, it was still fun, uh, but I, I think this one is... Well, is as someone who speaks differently than most folks, like you'll notice I just said wool. <laughs> <laughs> like, sometimes those rhyming games, they rhyme to me. Yeah. But they don't rhyme to the English language. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what do you got next? I want this game, FYI. Okay. I don't think it costs that much. I, I couldn't tell I you imagine, what like most but... party games, I mean, we probably can get that guy on Target on their, like, half price day. Yeah. Um, for the Queen! Yeah, so this is For the Queen uh, from Darrington Press. Uh, I believe there are earlier, older versions of this. Uh, it's, an, it's a neat little role-playing game. Uh, I know it's hard to tell that from looking at it, because uh, it's a deck of cards. Uh, but basically, uh, you, you have this deck of cards that give you situations. You, you are all retainers for this queen. Uh, you, you start the game by picking a queen. They, they give you a bunch of cards with different queens on them. You can see some of those here. Um, and you, you just pick these for flavor. They don't do anything to the game. You just say, you, you as a group decide, okay, who is our queen here? Um, and then you will flip over a card that will give you some sort of situation. Um, the example the guy there gave me was um, a card that said, uh, you are uh, 
Aside from the queen, you are secretly in love with someone else at the court, uh, but you must keep it hidden. Uh, who, it, who is it and why are you hiding it from everyone else? And so it, it'll give you stuff like that, and then you will have to come up with a short little storytelling scenario, right? Um, every And everyone will go around doing this for several rounds, and then at the end of the game, it always ends the same way. You get the final card that says something along the lines of the queen is under attack. Do you, you defend her or not, and why? And that's how basically every game ends. So, so does the box look like a book? Kind of, yeah. So the, the big thing here for me is this had the most beautiful art of anything. Yeah, that art is something else. Yeah, and we were ac actually talking to the art director, and I was like, dude, you have done <laughs> such an incredible job. Because I've seen older versions of this, and they look fine. Are they tarot sauce cards? Yes, they are. So it definitely has a tarot vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this, is, this thing just looks beautiful. Um, yeah, it does. So... Uh, and that is coming out May 14th from Darrington Press. Okay. Um, Very excited for this one. This yes. One. This one we know. Uh, speaking of things we backed on Kickstarter, we have backed this. Uh, Wild Gardens from Rose Gauntlet. Uh, you are playing as foragers, going around foraging for ingredients. Um, and baking different dishes for friends and family. Um, it's it's another really really pretty game. Um, this does this does not do it justice justice when you see it all laid out on the table. Uh, first of all, it's kind of a table hog. There's lots of components. You can see that. Uh, yeah, but they're all very pretty and very colorful. I would expect um, nothing less out of Rose Gauntlet. Yeah. Um, I would expect nothing short of perfection. I really would have lost our music, by the way. Uh, Rose Gauntlet, amazing, amazing, amazing game designers. Oh, it's just a quiet time in the song, I guess. No, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. there we go. Um, yeah, so uh, in a lot of these, uh, if, if y'all want to see a better representation, I'll, I have posted uh, videos for a lot of these. Uh, YouTube shorts and on our Instagram channel. Where can you um, find us? Showing these off. Uh, you can find us the same way everywhere. Elevation, Elevation underscore game. Correct. Um, on you YouTube, also can go to our Instagram. website, elevation.game. Yeah. Um, Join our Discord. Put the link in bio. Yeah. I love how we're dropping all this during an ad. So, Cosmic, <laughs> who knows? It's okay. I mean, I'll turn this into a YouTube later. Okay. Right? So, um,. Hit us up. Hit us up. Uh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, is so. Is this Elizabeth Harpin? No. Uh, she, does, she does have a mushroom game, but this is not her mushroom game. So, uh, mushrooms are just all the hotness right now. Huh? Yeah, apparently there's just a thing for mushrooms right now. Uh, this what was is like Foxes a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is Mycelia from Ravensburger. Um, it is available now. I believe it actually came out last year. Um, and they just have done another print run, essentially. Uh, but this is something that should, in theory, uh, be in your local game store. Uh, so it is a... Uh, Do you have a close-up of these cards? Yes. They refer to this... Oh, ask if you shall uh, receive. <laughs> <laughs> they refer to this as an introductory deck builder. So it is... It, it's a light game that you can play with kids... Um, but there's enough strategy there for it to be fun for adults as well. Okay, um, so like Harry Potter yes. card game. Yeah. Hogwarts Battle. Um, but not problematic, because who's mad at mushrooms? Nobody. <laughs> uh, so you have these boards with these little dewdrops, and th these are just little, like, um, glass pieces on here. Okay. Um, and the cards you play move these around, and you're trying to move them into this this symbol for you. Is it Othello with mushrooms? Kind of, maybe? Um, you, you're trying to get them onto this this tile that represents the shrine here, I think you called it. Oh, okay. And then they get added to this once they pop off the board. Um, and, that, and that's how you're scoring, by getting those dew drops into this thing. Um, and so the cards you're playing move them around and you're trying to get them in there. Um, 
And as they go in there, you'll get these leaves, which are your currency, which you can then use to buy more cards, right? Because it is a big thing. Um, but yeah, that it, it, fascinating. Again, it was. I didn't get to play this one. I just saw it, but it was pitched to me as an intro deck builder. Um, something that you can play like. Uh, I mean, the, the main selling point here is that it's cute art. Um, and I it, love decks. It really is. Yeah, the art is great. Yes. The art is arting for <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, this is neat. Uh, this is a paper app dungeon includes a pencil and a die. Uh, not just a pencil and a, it, it a, pencil, a pencil die as a die. Uh, they call it the P6. Uh, yes. So this is a neat little thing. It's a, see why you like them. It's it's a little. It literally costs ten bucks. Um, and this is coming out in April. Um. So, uh, they come, in, in, inside this box you get the pencil, the, the P6, right? Uh, and the rest of it is in a little notebook like this. Um, and each page has a little dungeon that you are, are working through. It's, it's a roll and write, and you, you can use a regular die for this, but you can also roll the pencil, and the pencil has one through six on each of the sides. And so you can use it as your die and determine your moves with it, right? Um, the other neat thing here... So I could like just sit in a meeting yeah. and do a roll and write, and yeah. just people would just think ADD Wendy's rolling her pencil, but also taking good notes. Potentially, yes. Uh, Love that. The other potentially neat thing, but the thing that also kind of scares me about this, because so sometimes this works well and sometimes it doesn't, these are algorithmically generated. So no two notebooks are the same. You get one of these, and oh. it's a completely unique set of dungeon maps for every one of these you buy. So and are the refills also $10? Yeah, each one of it's these little packages is $10. Pack for a little pack. Okay. Yeah. And it, it comes with, I don't know how many uh, sheets are in the notepad. Uh, but it comes with a notepad with a number of those. They're all unique. Um, this is a great Easter basket. Is it out now, did you say? April. April, okay. Yeah. So this is a good stocking stuffer at Christmas time. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I would play this. So yeah, I would play uh, that too. A little thing to sit down and, and futz with. Yeah. And the fact that's that these like are all... That's like a fidget spinner, but dungeons yeah. and dragons, yes. The fact that. these are all different, like... So if you buy another one, like it's not even going yeah, to be exactly the same. That's nice. That's great. Um, that's so much work. That one uh, from Lucky Duck. Uh, I got a few from them. On okay. Here. I sat through a presentation for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. This one I did play. Uh, River Valley Glassworks from All Play, um, which is hitting Kickstarter. Get this. Tomorrow. Oh, is it? Yes. Get this. Neat. Uh huh. Um, it's it is a neat little game. You are uh, you are drafting these little uh river stones. Okay. Are they resin? Are they glass? I believe they're resin. Depends on how big you back it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you are adding them to uh your little player board in sort of a mosaic. Uh, so the shapes matter when you're drafting them from the river. Um, okay. you, you basically, you start with a handful of these in your little bag. And for instance, uh, you can kind of see it there. Uh, the, the symbol with the, the sort of squash shape on it, on, yep. the, on the side of the river yep. there. So yep. Yep. if I had one of those, I could pay that little, little squash shape symbol by putting it in that spot. Okay. So, so I'd be adding a stone there, and then I could harvest all of the rocks on either side of it. So I'd place a stone there, and then I would take those three underneath it, maybe, or those two above it, whichever one I want, right? Okay. And when you take from that spot, you then remove that spot and move it to the back, and everybody gets pushed forward. Okay. So it's like a river. It's a... It works like a conveyor belt, like a river, where everything keeps moving forward. 
and eventually, if you don't harvest stuff, it gets pushed out into a general supply at the end. Okay. Um, which you, you pull harvest. Out of general supply? Yes, but when you do that, those go into your bag for drafting, not for scoring. Okay. So you only get points that you can add to your player board when you take them out of the river. Um, and like I said, shape matters when you're drafting, but when you add them to your player board, it's the color. So you are building these columns, everything of one color in one column, right? And the higher you get on that column, the more you score. Okay. So like if I drafted from that, that middle one with a squash and the two triangles, I take those two blue ones, even though they're different shapes, and put those in the same column. Okay. Right. Um, and that's it. I mean, so it's a fairly fairly simple game, but there's a lot of strategy in figuring out which shapes to take to draft with, where to place. Um, Did you love this? I, I yeah, I had fun with it. Uh, Jesse and I played it at their booth. It, it was it was a good time. Uh, and that Kickstarter is dropping tomorrow, three nineteen. Yes. Okay. Um, and what's the name of the company again? This is All Play. The folks who made our table. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, we like our table. We do. Um, this is another Lucky Duck joint. Uh, Kingdom Rush Elemental Uprising. Which Judging by the cover of this game, I'm gonna like this. Uh, maybe. Uh, so. This is based on a phone game. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. That is so funny. It didn't dawn on me until you said that, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I played Kingdom Rush like years ago when it first came out. Uh -huh. I actually liked it. Okay. Um, on the phone. Uh, they've had a billion versions since then that I have not played. Um, but this is this is using that license, and like the phone game, it is a tower defense game. Uh, this one I did not play, so I can't give you a detailed breakdown on how it plays. Did you take that picture? No. Okay. Uh, but, uh, again, if it plays like the phone game, you are, I believe you are building these towers, um, that do different things, that, that zap enemies as they go by them, um, and the enemies are heading towards your castle or whatever you're trying, right? Um, so, uh, this, I think, is out now by the time I'm saying this, yeah. Okay. It, it, w it was releasing a couple days after the convention, so okay. it, sh it should be out by now. Um, Very so excited for this next one. At your, at your game store now. Uh, also did not play this, but this was a, another big deal at the show. Okay. Um, this is Star Wars Unlimited uh, from Fantasy Flight. Um, so we know we're going to like it and that it's going to become a budget line? Potentially. Uh, <laughs> this is their new uh, Star Wars... I think this is an LCG. It's um, an LCG? I think so. I don't think they do TCGs. Fantasy Flight. Um, but... Uh, the, I, TCG, SCG, it's a deck build, it's a Star Wars deck builder, battler, magic-like. Um, Again, with the two-player map. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly how it plays, because I didn't get to play it. I was playing Altered instead. Um, but people are excited for it. I get the sense that it is similar in that it is a race. Okay. I, I don't think it works exactly this way. I think you're building up points in the middle, perhaps. Um, and the first one to a certain number wins. Okay. Um, that's all I know about it. Um, When's this dropping? Uh, this is out uh, now? Yes, available now. It was dropping like the second day I was at the convention. It was coming out. So okay. they were pushing it hard. This was advertised every week. Oh, ever. I bet. I bet. I bet. Um, so do you think that's what MJ was working on before she left? Maybe. So where is MJ now? Earthborn. Queen. <laughs> Fucking queen. Okay. Uh, we just played a game of this. Uh, this is Altered. Obviously saw this while I was there. Got a copy of it. Uh, this is coming out in so August. So you have to buy each person individually. 
if you're buying those starter packs from a game store, yes. If you back the Kickstarter, you may be getting all of this in, in a package. It okay. Just depends. Um, the, these are the starter decks for each of the heroes, and then I think. The and it looks like the track cards. is like one solid piece, or are those cards too? Uh, this particular track may be one solid piece. Well, I say it looks like one solid piece, but then it looks like maybe I'm just seeing things. I'm assuming that they are going to sell you other land pieces. I don't know that okay. for sure. Sure. I did. I didn't. This is the one thing I did not talk to the developers about when I was playing this. But okay. I'm assuming they're going to sell some some other types well, of. Well, this games. game is rad, and I'm looking forward to playing it tomorrow. Um, there's just some close up. Okay. Of some of the cards. Yeah. Uh, the big log line here, of course, is the the QR codes and the fact that you can scan these and, and own them digitally, trade them digitally. And, and because this is a basic card, it's okay to have the QR up there. Yes. Uh, okay. in, in fact, if you go to their website, all of the images for all of these are on it with the QR code. Okay. Uh, because I think you can just... They, they don't care if you have the QR codes for everything in, in the, starter. the starter pack. Okay. Right? The, only, the only QR codes that they have blurred out on their website are for the heroes. Yeah, okay. Um... And uh, another lucky duck joint. This is Divinus. This is a tile placement game. You saw so many games, Jeremy. I, I saw quite a few. This, uh, if you ever played Populous back in the day, you can probably tell just from looking at the art, this is very clearly inspired by Populous. Um, I don't know if you were playing as a god in this. I think you were working for the gods. Okay. But it's a similar uh, concept where you are placing these tiles that then have effects that build up different things for different tribute, for different deities. Um, that's about all I can tell you about it. Love it. Okay. <laughs> um, it is coming out on March 29th. Okay, so next week. Yeah. Uh, here was another really fun one. Uh, again, speaking of party games that are actually fun, Smug Owls. This is probably my number oh, two. Oh yeah, on the I show. remember you tell me about this. Um. So the conceit here is you you have these three deck of card decks of cards. Um. The start of a question, the middle, and the end are, are riddle. These are these are making riddles basically. Um. And the way it works is, uh, as an example here, you get uh, what rises before it breaks. And then everyone at the table, without saying it out loud, thinks of an answer. What you okay. haven't answered, you put your hand down. And the last person who hasn't put their hand down yet becomes the smug owl. And they get to judge everyone's answers to the Okay, do you have an answer to this? Because I have the yeah. answer. Okay. What is your answer? A bubble. The beat. Okay. <laughs> Good. I won a bubble. The beat. Yeah. Like a beat drop. <laughs> um. I need a beat drop. Uh, I think what I had when I was playing this was what walks before it falls. Uh, and a me. Person? Well, yeah. A uh, drunk person. <laughs> no, we didn't say a drunk person, but me and the other person both put our hands down immediately, mm -hmm. and the third the third lady playing was like, oh, okay. Um, and uh, immediately both of us, uh, I said a baby, and the other person said an old person. <laughs> um, uh, but that's Smug Owls. That's out there now. Uh, you can go buy that from their website. Yeah, that should. seems fun. Yeah, the, and these people, uh, I'm trying not to let, I met some cool people. These are, this is a cool couple that I met there. They're in North Carolina game designers. We love North Carolina. Um, and they were, they were great. Okay. Um. Is this the last one? Next no. to last. Okay. Um, so this one I did play. This is Stone Spire Architects from Thunderworks. Um. Thunderworks! It is coming out March? Everything they had, had, had said March, but no date. So hopefully it's March of 24? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. This is from the people who brought you... Where is it? Right here. Oh. 
Okay. Cartographers, and you can tell when you play this. This game is basically cartographers with cards instead of dice. Um, you can get these cards, and then you, you're building a dungeon. Um, and you draft cards, Sushi Go style. Take one and pass. Um, and then you place them. But once everyone has drafted and passed, you place cards in your dungeon. You have different uh, scoring cards that tell you, like, hey, get points if you have a certain number of slimes in your dungeon. Or points if you have uh, dungeon rooms that have traps and monsters in them together. And, and those change every turn, right? Um, and so it's, it's giving you random goals that you're trying to meet. Uh, you have, I don't, you can't see it here. Uh, you can see the, the exit here. But there's also a little entrance token. And so the one rule is you have to have a road, a path, at least one path that connects the entrance all the way down to it. I see a gelatinous cube. Yeah. Anytime you see the word gelatinous in a game, you know good times are coming. Oh, um, I liked it. I had fun with this. Uh, Jesse hated this. <laughs> But I had fun with it. <laughs> yeah. He did not like it. Um, I didn't know he could play a board game and not just... Well, oh, yeah. Uh, he does not like Mentions of Madness. Uh, but he will cop to... He, he will immediately tell you after he says that, I'm an outlier. Everyone loves that game. You should absolutely get that game and play it. I just personally don't like it. So. Yeah. yeah. Um... But I had fun with this. Okay. Um, Nestlings, uh, the final Lucky Duck game here, coming out in August. Very pretty. Um, about the only thing I can tell you about this is that the folks at Lucky Duck were very, very uh, adamant that this is not just Wingspan with dice. Oh. Because apparently that is what... And, I certainly see how you could make that judgment looking at this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but they were very adamant that there is more going on there. It's not just wingspan with dice. So okay. Is it looks cozy. Yeah. Um, I'm betting that this is something we will see at Gen Con. I look forward to that. I'm interested what's in these bags. Uh, I think different dice tiles? or the, dice. Di the okay. different uh, food tiles. So yeah, F food tiles plus dice. Can't imagine why anyone would think this is just weak span with dice. And uh, birds. Yeah. Uh, but again, they stressed it is not just weak span with you dice. You know, Lucky Duck, like, I trust their opinion of that, but I will verify it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's it. That's so everything I saw was, again. Okay, so which one... Which ones are we going to the game store to get immediately? Smug immediately. kittens. Well, some of these. What we, was it called? Smug owls. Smug owls. Yes, I would like to buy a copy. Of yes, Smug owls. I also. And it's funny. Like I'm not a big party game girl. I'm not really a party girl. Um, but I think the two that intrigued me the most on this are party games. Yeah, connected uh, and, was also neat. Um, wild garden. Well, we've already backed in, so we're here. Yeah. Um, like I said, Alliterati was, was probably my favorite. Uh, I thought Get Bit was great. I think that's a, a great light one you can play with kids. Okay. Um, Paper App Dungeon, why would you not buy that for 10 bucks? Yeah, that seems pretty great. Um, yeah. Okay. I think those are my takeaways. Um, I love that. Um, I may have to go with you next year. Okay. I'm looking to see who's online. The game guildies are online. Timey is online. Okay, well. well we're going to Timey then. Of course we're going to Timey. <laughs> Thanks, Cosmic. Solid takeaways. Cosmic is truly our best friend. Um, let's go raid Timey. Are we going to be here tomorrow? Uh, I don't know, are we? I don't know, are we? Because we're not going to be here on Thursday? I lost my keyboard. Oh, it's right in front of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, perhaps. Uh, we'll need to decide what we're playing. Uh, but yeah. 
We'll drop it in Discord. Yeah. Make sure you follow our Discord at the link in bio. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for watching, y'all. Um, let's go see Timing. Let's looks go like see he's Timing unboxing. Is he unboxing? Uh, looks like he's playing Auk, maybe? Oh, okay. Eric Lang joint? Mm -hmm. Is he an Auk guy? I believe so. Okay, right now. See ya. See ya.